And the beautiful thing about dahlias is the more you cut, the more flowers are produced right up till the first frost. And I love dahlias, but I probably don't love them with the same passion and intensity as Jeff Hoyle in Cheshire. Whatever position you want to put it, there is a dahlia that will fit. I love the different sizes and shapes and colours. I mean, you, for starters, you've got every colour but blue. Then you've got big ones and you've got the miniature pom-pom dahlia, so you've got a wide variety of sizes. And you've got different shapes as well. And also, even heights, you've got some that will grow to eight foot high and others that only grow to two foot. Well, I was brought up to be a gardener, and my dad was a, a keen dahlia grower. And uh, when I was a lad, he used to have me crawling around under his dahlias. Well, when we first came here, it was just one long piece of grass. So I got into flowers, and as time's gone by, I realised that dahlias give me more colour and more interest than any other plant. And so I'd thrown out all the shrubs and everything else. The lawns have got smaller. Really, it's taken over my life, I suppose. Well, I plan everything by height. I go around each autumn, measure how high each dahlia has grown and keep records. And then when I put my stakes in the following spring, I try to allocate a tall dahlia to a tall stake and a short dahlia to a short stake so that it uh, gets a tiered effect. There's a dahlia there called Rycroft Delight, which always grows to about eight or nine feet. And so I know I can rely on that dahlia to grow that high the following year. I tried doing a colour scheme one year where I had a red bed, an orange bed, a yellow bed, and it, it didn't look right at all. So and now I just go on height, the colours look after themselves. I tend to go for brighter colours and just have the odd white or a cream one here as a contrast. I love this dahlia, it's a miniature decorative called Blight and Lady in Red. I like it because of the strong colour, the fact that it's got very strong stems that makes sure it stands above the foliage. And I also like the lovely form of it. This one is a dark leaf variety called Happy Wink. It only grows about two foot tall, has loads of flowers, beautiful color. The bees love it. If you want really strong flowers, the best thing to do to produce a strong growth and a bigger flower is to take out the two side shoots. So you just get them between your fingers and chop them off like that. For the novice, it might be better to try a miniature variety because they, t they tend to have uh, smaller flowers, stronger stems. And you'll see, for example, with Western Spanish Dancer here, I'm going to let three flowers grow on the one stem and it, and it will be strong enough to support it. So I'll leave it to its own devices. The main thing that I do is keep on top of the deadheading at least twice a week, but I do it more often than that, I would say. So you go around and chop off anything that looks as though it's about to die or has died and uh, discard them onto the compost heap. And you'll find that by the following day, there's plenty more flowers anyway. I'm quite ruthless. People say, I'll put, take that home and put it in a vase, but it's on my compost heap. <laughs> it does take a lot of my time. Is it worth it? Absolutely worth it. I mean, when you get to times like this and you look around and you think, I've done that, yeah, it's worth it.